What is going on everyone? My name is Andy. Welcome back to another FPL video and today it's not part of the usual weekly content that I do on this channel. Uh, we are looking at a slightly separate video, something a bit different. I finally got my team back. Um, it's not in the necessary pretty state as the title says 90 plus transfers have been made so i'm going to show you what kind of state it's in what kind of options i've got going forward um, it's not the end of the world it's not season ended and i do have ways to stop those hits uh, which is fortunate because some people are in a worse state than me so i kind of need to get over that fact and just get on with the season but there's a couple of different options i've got so i'm going to talk through them show you what the team looks like and show you what it might look like going forward so if you enjoy this video give it a like a thumbs up because i finally got my account back much appreciated subscribe if you're new around here plenty of weekly content to come let's jump into it so for anyone that doesn't know my fpl account got hacked how that happened i don't know in hindsight the password wasn't great i've probably used that password on a few different sites um, email address has been around for ages as well so maybe it wasn't that hard for someone who knew what they were doing uh, to get in thankfully fpl have got the account back for me all my history still intact but 90 transfers have been made and this is the state that the team uh, remains in so i know a lot of people have been kind of tweeting fpl saying you need to put the transfers back and stuff you know whether or not they have a way to do that i don't know but having been on the other side of these things before i know it's not always necessary as easy as it looks from the outside yes they might be able to see what i had before it doesn't mean they got the tools to put it back even if they can see kind of the code and stuff um for all the for all the things that are in the database basically they might have internal processes which stop it happening obviously if they do it for me they have to do it for everyone else as well and it's probably not something they want to get into they might start seeing people kind of um use vpns and make loads of transfers and to say their account was hacked and be wanting to put back into the position before they made the transfers and basically start reversing stuff because they made mistakes so i can see why they've not done it um, obviously it's a bit easier for me to say that because i've got my team back and i can rectify the hits um, but yeah i can see why it's doing it so i'm not going to fret about that too much but this is the state the team was left in basically now to be fair it did leave me with aguero and Aubameyang, although Aubameyang was benched uh, when I got the team, Aguero was captain, triple captain, in fact, but I cancelled that straight away because I obviously don't want to use it. Overall, team's okay. Puki, Aubameyang, and Aguero is about as good as it gets for a strike force, but the rest of the players not so good. So what's happened here, although I can cancel the transfers for wildcard uh, or with a wildcard and free hit, um, I'm obviously going to lose something either way. If I use the free hit... Then I've got to choose a different team. I get my team back next week and I don't lose any value. If I use a wild card, obviously that chip's gone. Uh, but I am going to lose a lot of value that I had tied up in players. Because most of these players on screen I didn't already own. So I'm going to talk about kind of the pros and cons to each thing. Um, and what I'm looking at doing moving forward. Um, and then I kind of show you a wild card team that I quickly put together as well. So just to quickly show you the kind of state that I'm in right now. Basically what you see on screen... Um, is my team going into game week seven so this is the team that i kind of left myself with in game week six i had two free transfers going into this week obviously i'm going to lose one of them once i use the wild card or free hit because after you use them the next week you only get one so i've lost two uh free transfers as well um and this is the team i had and basically my plan was to do zinchenko to a 4.5 million defender and greenwood to abraham which i could do because i had 1.9 million in the bank as you can see now because of the value i've lost i've only got 0.7 million so i've lost 1.2 million worth of value and that's kind of come from pope was 4.5 when i bought him now he's 4.6 it was going to cost me more to get him lundstrom was 4 million when i got him in now he's 4.4 um so i actually got in a 4.6 so not too bad De Bruyne has gone up from 9.6 when i got him into 9.9 .9. i think pookie was 6.7 or 6.8 so he's gone up 0.3 million as well obviously sterling too uh, and Mount is the biggest one. I got Mount at 6 million. Obviously, he became a bit of a bandwagon from there. And he's up to 6.5 million. So the other annoying thing is, not only have I lost value, but it's not a case of wildcarding and getting rid of these players because I don't want them. Because a lot of them you do. Lundstrom's a defender. You got for 4 million. He's playing the midfield. Um, Mount is doing so good for Chelsea. got really good fixtures. Pukki's obviously been in great form. And De Bruyne looks almost must-have at the moment. So a lot of the players that I've kind of got value in are the players I want to keep. Um, so we're going to talk about how i might keep that value but the team is looking pretty good so it is, it is really frustrating don't get me wrong i'm not like completely happy about the fact that i can't get my team back how it is i know um these things happen but the team was looking good i had a good plan there's no one i really wanted to get rid of i had two free transfers to sort out to get abraham uh, but that's kind of gone now so let's talk about what the next step is so wild card versus free hit is basically what i'm going to do um, to get rid of all those transfers that have been made 
and basically save the season. So obviously if those 90 transfers go through, so 90 plus because I've made 95 now this season, obviously if they go through, then I lose all my points I've gained this year and I'm, I'm far behind. I'm never going to catch up. So using one of these chips, although it's not ideal, it's obviously the best way uh, and the only play I really have to make. So it's a choice of which one. Now, obviously a lot of them, if, you, if it's a positive for one, it's a negative for the other. So for wildcard, obviously I saved the free hit. Um, that can be really beneficial towards the end of the season when you're managing blank game weeks, double game weeks, and things like that. Now, I've spoken to Ben Crelin on Twitter. If you're following me, you probably follow him already. Um, he's a bit of a blank and double game week wizard, so he's already kind of started working out um, when these blanks and double game weeks will be. And I'm not going to go through it all now because it's quite complicated. I'm not sure I even got my head fully around it, but the gist of it was it shouldn't be as bad to navigate the final game weeks as it was last year. Last year, it was pretty difficult without these chips, players that didn't have them, um, did find it more difficult I think that's fair to say this year it shouldn't be so bad so potentially I could go without the free hit but obviously it's still a really valuable chip it allows you to completely overhaul your team for a blank game we cannot make any transfers based on that um, and then obviously carry on making transfers towards the double game weeks at the end of the season so that's one thing if a wild card I lose value I've just spoken about that the likes of Mount, Pookie, De Bruyne I lose all that value and I have to start again essentially um now, the, the one thing to say about that is, obviously it's going to make me play different. 1.2 million is a lot of money, um, but it is just, it's almost Salah to Mane. So it's not the end of the world. I obviously want to keep Salah. You know me, I've had him for a while. I'm not really looking to get rid of him. But to have Mane instead might not be the end of the world. Maybe I get rid of the, uh, Sterling and bring in someone like Sun and use the 2 million elsewhere. So there's ways to obviously use that money, but I would be at a disadvantage compared to everyone else. And I, it's more frustrating because I made moves early um, in game weeks earlier in the season to make sure that I had extra value this year and now that would obviously go down the path so that's one of the disadvantages and obviously we've got a second wild card it's not like free hit um, once you use the free hit it's gone once I use the wild card I have that second one anyway um, and the first wild card is maybe not it's not that you want to say it's not important so obviously it is a really valuable chip but a lot of people use them in kind of game weeks three game weeks four game week five and they're fine for the rest of the season I've done that loads of times um, the only reason I'm not using it this year because I've been in an okay position. I didn't really have a plan. That's what I'm saying. No plan to use it. So maybe just using it now and getting it over and done with wouldn't be so bad. If I use the free hit, I get to keep all the value. I get my team for next week, which I'm pretty happy with anyway. Because I've lost the one free transfer, it does mean it would take me a hit to get Abraham. And obviously, um, any players that kind of go up in value between now and, and next week, I wouldn't be able to get their price rate. So if Abraham goes up again, if Otamendi goes up again, I won't be able to transfer them in because I'll be on a free hit. Um, so it would cost me more next week. And obviously I'd have to use two free transfers. So I'd have to take a hit. So minus four, obviously not bad in the circumstances, but that's one of the things to think about. But I would get to keep my value and I'd get to keep the wild card. So if things do go really wrong in kind of four or five weeks or there's a big fixture swing or someone comes into really good form and I need to get them in and I don't have a good way of doing it, wild card would be the way to go. Uh, and another reason to free is I was really happy with the team. I was talking to um, Lego Mane before I came on on Twitter. And I was kind of saying I was really happy with that team. I thought it was looking good, looking good for the, the few game weeks coming. And I'd planned really well as well. So there's another reason to free hit because I'm happy getting that team back. Uh, but obviously, I would have no free hit for the blank. So let me know in the comments below what you think. Wildcard versus free hit. Obviously, there's pros and cons to both. Value is a key thing. Uh, but then free hit later on in the season could really work out as well. So free hit would basically save me 1.2 million. I get to play around with a team this week. The only thing that puts me off is, I think when you free hit outside of planning for blanks and doubles, so like a random game week, like game week seven, you feel like you have to be different. Um, but realistically, I want the likes of Sterling or Aguero. I want Kevin De Bruyne. I want a Man City defender. I'm going to want uh, Liverpool players. And everyone's already got them anyway. So I'd be free hitting to get a very similar team. Obviously, I could bring in the likes of Sun maybe, but... Um, ultimately there's not too much I want to do that's different to my own team so do I preserve the value value take the free hit um, and not have it for the end of the season or do I wild card lose the value uh, and then just carry on playing from there and have the free hit later on so I've put together a wild card team uh, I'm going to be totally honest with you I've not done a free hit team because even outside of FPL this week has been manic to have all this hacking going on as well um, it's just been a really hectic week so I've hardly had any chance to look at this I only got this account back this afternoon so that's when I found out what kind of state it was in I had a oh I thought I might get the the transfers reversed but that's not happened so I've now had to I've got to think about this quick basically so wildcard's a little bit easier because I had my previous team I was pretty happy with it 
I know what players I was looking to bring in. So I kind of got an idea of what I would do going forward. Obviously, when you look at it, you know it's not too much different to my other team, but whatever. Um, again, we all have to try and get over that. Free hit will require a bit more thought about whether I want to keep most of the players I had or do I want to go really different and try and nail it in a week where no one else is really using it. But I'll talk about wild, uh, free hit on the stream tomorrow um, at Thursday at 9 o'clock. But wildcard, this is the team I'll go for. Now, it's not actually that bad. The, the key differences here between what my team was before... Um, and what it would have been after my transfers. I would have brought Abraham in, um, and to do that, I would have taken Zinchenko out for a 4.5 million. So that would have probably been someone like Tamori. Um, and then Otamendi is in. He could have come in instead of Lucas Digne, and that would have cost me minus four. So I basically would have got um, a very similar team to this, um, but I would have I would have had Barnes instead of instead of Yarmolenko. Essentially, that's the only difference here. Um, now, whether or not that's a bad thing, I don't know. Barnes obviously blanked a couple of times, so maybe going for a 3 5 2 is not the end of the world. Right now, there's not really. I was talking about going 3 4 3 before, but because there's not any other strikers outside of Barnes, Puk, and Abraham that's cheaper that I really want right now, I'd probably go to 3 5 2. So instead of Yarmolenko, it could be Lamella. Started every game for Spurs, they got good fixtures coming up. Um, I think he got rested midweek as well. And the only other big thing is I've, I've got rid of Lundstrom. Yes, he was great when he was a 4 million defender, but now I have to pay 4.4 million for him. I have to think a bit more because with this team, I would play Trent Alexander Arnold every week. I'd play Otamendi every week, and then one of the other three. And soyuncu has got pretty good fixtures. Tomori for Chelsea has got pretty good fixtures. So I wouldn't necessarily be playing Lundstrom every week. And Rico is in the team while Charlie Daniels is out. Um, and should keep his place. He's on set pieces as well. So I kind of think it's probably better to save the 0.3 million and just get him. So. Obviously, I've taken a value here. When I when I actually put this together just before I did this video, it actually made me feel a bit better about wildcarding. So I think that's the way I'm siding. So I get to keep the free hit. Um, and obviously, one thing is um, when you don't have value ra wrapped up in players like Mount and Puki, um, sometimes you've got a lot of value wrapped up in players, essentially. When they start doing badly, you hold on to them for longer because you don't want to lose that money. I won't have that issue. Um, now, maybe that's trying to be uh, clutching at stores that this is a good thing. Um, obviously, it's not a good thing, but that's just one little silver lining, maybe. Uh, but yeah, this is the kind of wildcard team I'll do. I'll talk about free hit and wildcards and stuff more on the stream tomorrow, but I just want to give you an idea of what's going on um, and kind of what my thinking is with the team. So that's the video. My uh, FPL team, as it stands, has made 90 plus transfers this season, 90 this week alone. Um, so I've got to use the wildcard of free hit. So I'll figure out which one of those to do and then kind of get back to you. We'll discuss it on the stream tomorrow, Thursday, 9 o'clock. Um, this should go out on Wednesday night. It's going to be a late one, but I want to get it out tonight. And then because of the weird week it's been and because my you know my team's kind of up in the air, I'll probably do a shorter video on Friday going for kind of the final team that I decide to do, whether that's wildcard or free hit. The beauty is because I know that I'm going to have to do one of those. Um, I don't have to make the decision right now, but I can start making transfers in case of wildcard. So if someone's going up tonight that I might want, I can put them in the team now, just make the transfer. And if I free hit, fair enough, I lose them. If I wildcard, then I've already gained a little bit of value back. So not the end of the world. Um, it's going to be a more challenging season now. You know what I'm like. I'm going to make content week in, week out, whatever the you know whatever happens with the season. When you see that wildcard team, it's not the end of the world. Like I said, people are in worse situations than me, inside and outside of FPL. Um, so we just try and get on with it. I'm not going to keep complaining to FPL. That's done. They've done what they can. We're back. Um, but yeah, thanks for watching. If you did enjoy it, if you're happy that I've got my team back, give it a like. Subscribe if you're new around here. The weekly content will be back to normal next week. Obviously, this week's been a bit weird. Um, I do weekly content, videos, short videos, and streams. So next stream will be Thursday at 9 o'clock. I must have said that about 90 times, same as the transfers. But I'll leave it there. Like, comment, share, subscribe. Let me know below what you think, and I'll catch you next time. Cheers all.